All right, what's up guys? <clears throat> Today we're gonna unbox um, a MuPad kit, prototype kit from Out of the Box. And basically we're gonna go through all the components, all the different boxes with inside, and then eventually we're gonna solder all and assemble all the components. So this should be a good like reference for you guys to look at before your lab, as well as while you're actually soldering to see kind of how we do things. Okay, so like we said, this is gonna be a standard unboxing video. And this box contains a MuPad version 2.0 kit. And inside this, there's a breakout board for um, a microcontroller, as well as some PCB accessory boards that extend the functionality of that breakout board. So we're going to go ahead and open it and explore the boxes. So we're going to tackle this left box first. The ordering might be different for your guys' kits. We're going to identify the actual breakout board for the microcontroller first, called the MuPad itself. So in this box, there are two PCBs, one for the actual... Uh, main attraction, which is the MuPad itself, and the MuPad, like we mentioned, um, contains it's it breaks out this Atmel ATX Mega 128A1U microcontroller, and gives us access to some power signals as well as three I/O ports. Now, these three I/O ports are going to be able to allow us to connect multiple or the additional um, PCB accessory boards to the actual micropad. Now, on top of that, on the bottom of the board, there's another 40-pin connector for this additional PC boot board called the memory base board. The memory base board is going to allow us to give access or allow us access to some external um, signals that allow us to connect, connect potentially to external components. And this, this component, however, does not give us usually access to enough of the signals that we need to connect to something like a, a, a moderately sized SRAM, allow us maybe to connect to an LCD, etc. But in this same kit, we have access to this other sandwich board which is called the EBI base board, which is going to connect between the MuPad and the memory base. So, go ahead and unbox that now too. So this board's gonna allow us is give further signals so that we can actually connect to more external components. So that is in this version of the kit, this, this specific, take it out of this too, EBI base board, also called the EBIB. However, um, in future, iterations of this board, this will actually be combined into one board. The memory base and the EBIB will be combined into one board. So this will connect actually into the bottom of the MuPad, like so, and then this guy will connect onto the bottom of the EBIB. And then you'll use spacers and screws to connect all of those together. Okay. Before we go to the actual um, other accessory boards. I want to mention the cables that connect to the micropad. So the micropad has access to a USB-B connector, which is going to be connected to your computer with a USB-A cable. So you use USB-A to B cable that's going to be plugging from your computer to the MuPad. That's going to be used to power the board most of the time, as well as program the board. Because on the on the actual board, there's an onboard programmer. It's going to be used so we don't have to do an external um, ICE component for anybody that uses other Atmel processors. Um, and as well as the USB-B connector, there's also a DC 5 volt jack for this DC 5 volt power adapter within this white box. Now this power adapter, it's necessary that everybody that has this kit use this exact DC 5 volt power adapter for powering this board. Otherwise, it might draw too much current and fry your board. Um, so this will be used to power two of the accessory boards, um, and we'll get into that in a couple minutes. And so additionally also there's a sticker that will we give additionally to this kit in lab that will be used to use to identify this power adapter. So it's recommended that you place that on the power adapter. Okay, so putting that aside for one second, here let's go to this box that has as the components that are gonna be used to connect the boards together as well as the accessory boards. We won't cover the components um, that are used that we will solder onto the component, we'll solder onto the accessory boards until later when we actually do the soldering portion of this video. But here in this, this Ziploc bag is the three accessory boards. So we'll go, left, I guess, left to right. So in this leftmost board is the switch and LED backpack. Now this simply gives access to, you'll have a component for eight dip switches as well as eight LEDs. An LED bank and they also have access to two tactile switches and as mentioned before you're going to be connecting these and I can go ahead and break it off you're going to be connecting these to the micro pad via some male and female header connectors 
and that will be accessed. You'll use those through the GPIO or the IO ports on the board. So that's a switching LED backpack. Let's go next to the analog backpack. So the analog backpack is going to have access to connect a speaker as well as oops, as well as it has access to connect a CDS cell. So I can pull out those components actually. So the CDS cell, CDS photoresistor cell, and that's going to be plugging into this portion of the board right here. And we'll get into more details later how to deal with that. But that allows us access to a certain sensor, an analog sensor we can have access. And then as well as the speaker component. Which this speaker will have a plastic enclosure. But more or less the speaker will be going here. And um, additionally, so this backpack need, is the first of the backpacks that we described that needs access to the power adapter that we briefly described before to power the actual amplifying circuit that's going to be located on this backpack. Okay, so it's the first use for that power adapter. Now the last backpack that we have in this kit is the robotics backpack. The robotics backpack is going to have an IMU on it that's going to contain an accelerometer and gyroscope as well as connectors to have a motor driver. And we're gonna, we, in this class right now, we don't use a motor driver. However, the kit in future semesters might use the motor driver, and this would be the motor that we use. Okay, so we'll get into more details about those later, just getting a brief overview right now. So let's go ahead and start dealing with the actual um, order of how we want to assemble the components. And one last thing before we get to the soldering, um, as we mentioned, this power adapter applies to the analog backpack for the amplifying circuit. Um, but this power adapter also applies to the, the robotics backpack that connects for the actual motor driver itself. So it also needs additional current. So let's get to the soldering now. Alright guys, this is Wes now. I'm swapping over with Chris to do the soldering portion of this video. Um, so the, the purpose of this part of the video is basically to give you an overview uh, kind of a step-by-step -step guide of how to actually solder and assemble the full uh, micropad kit from out of the box. So the very first thing um, we recommend is is kind of organizing all of your parts into different different uh, sections that kind of cor correspond to where the parts are going to go. Um, and then after you know you have all the parts and you've you've checked your parts list and stuff like that, um, we're going to go ahead and start the assembly process. So in this video, we're going to follow the assembly guide that's provided to you on the website um, with the exception of the first two steps are going to be swapped the order. Uh, so we're going to actually cut these the smaller headers um, out of these four 40 pin headers first so that we don't have to turn our soldering iron on and leave it running yet. Uh, so And then after that, we're going to actually start soldering once we have all the different size header pieces. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start doing that with one of these, and then I will fast forward through cutting the rest of them. Okay. Um, and one thing you want to reference is there's a table in the assembly guide on one of the first few pages that tells you uh, the different size um, headers that you need to cut from these four 40-pin headers. So I'm going to be referencing that as I do this, and I'll try to include a, a picture in the video if we can. Uh, so I know for a fact that we need at least two uh, two pin header pieces so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that and I and then I'll fast forward the rest and we have these these wire strippers slash wire cutters in the lab for you guys to use we have a few so you can't use you know you might have to share but um, so I like using these because they have a nice straight edge here that'll cut the headers without you know trying to do it with your fingers will work but you might get an extra header or you know not enough headers and then you have to borrow some more and you know nobody likes that so what I like to do is get the get the straight edge of the wire cutters, line them up with the groove uh, in, the, in the breakaway headers that you want to actually cut. So I'm putting the straight edge into the groove of the second, the second header there. And then I'm going to cover the header so that it doesn't fly halfway across the room and you can't find it or you know run into somebody's eye or something like that. And then I'm just going to kind of quickly apply pressure and there we go. So we got a two pin header. Um, so like I said, I'm going to get another two pin header and then I'm going to follow the rest of the assembly guide table to cut 8-pin headers and I think a 9-pin header and some more. And then I'll fast forward through that. All 
All right, so after cutting all those, I now have exactly what I was looking for on the table. I have two two pin headers, two 13 pin headers, a nine pin header, and then 10 plus three um, eight pin headers, okay? And those are gonna come from all the different 40 pin headers. So just follow the table. It tells you which headers to cut from which of the 40 pin headers. So you end up with um, two or three extra odd length headers that you probably won't use, but you can if you mess up one of the two pin headers, but these aren't gonna be enough um, to replace the eight pin headers. So be pretty careful when you're cutting these. Okay, so now that we have all the headers, um, I'm kind of just gonna go through each of these PCBs and tell you kind of which of the headers we're gonna put in them without doing it yet. So each backpack, which is these three boards, um, is gonna have four eight pin male headers they're gonna be installed here, and that's how they're gonna to connect to the micro pad, which is this, which we're gonna assemble first. And then some of the um, backpacks have additional headers that you can use for probing the signals with your dad board. So the, for the switches, for example, has a nine pin header that you're gonna put here. Um, the robotics backpack, for example, has an extra header here that you're gonna use for probing the serial communication signals. Uh, and, and then a couple of the backpacks have these two pin header locations that are used for different things uh, on the different backpacks. So the first thing we're going to do, which is kind of in line with the assembly guide, is we're going to put the female headers onto the micro pad. So these are going to be installed so that they're facing upwards like this, so that the backpacks and the headers, the male headers on the backpacks can plug into it like that, which, which will make more sense after we get the headers on later. All right, so there's a lot of different ways you can go about doing this. Um, because the this USB port here is a little taller than the female headers, you can't just like put it on the put it on the table nicely because it will it'll lay at kind of an angle. So another thing you could you could do is um, put two of the headers on so that it so that it still kind of leans at an angle but not quite as bad. And doing that will allow you to at least solder one of the pins while it's while it's sitting on the table, and then you can go in and and kind of adjust it later. So I'm turning on the soldering iron now. Um, I would recommend putting it somewhere be between six and seven hundred degrees Fahrenheit, just to be safe. Because if you leave it the iron on the boards too long, they could burn the traces or melt the board, which isn't good. Okay. So once the light starts blinking on the soldering iron, good to go, it's up to temperature. So your TA should have given you a little bundle of solder that you can use and uh, you should have enough to solder the whole thing, but if not, just ask for more. So uh, I'm gonna use the, the ladder method that I said, I'm just gonna put two of the female headers under, under the board so it's standing up and then I'm gonna solder one of the pins on each corner of the headers so that I can, I can then like lift the board and and solder the other pin to get the headers straight. Because the, really, the most important thing of this process is to make sure these female headers are as perpendicular to the board as possible so that the backpacks fit in nicely, okay? So take my soldering iron, and like I said, I'm gonna just tack down one of each of the pins on a header. So remember, the soldering iron should touch the, the pin of the component and the pad, and then on the other side, you should, you're supposed to feed in the solder. So I don't need to. You don't need to put all the solder on at once because this is the point of this is just to just to hold the header still, so that you can manipulate it without having to worry about it falling out. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this other header. So now that there's a little bit of solder on each of those, I can now turn it upside down and the headers won't fall out, okay? So notice how, because it was in an angle, these female headers aren't flush to the board. So you can solve that by using one of your fingers to press, uh, for not, not harshly down, but gently down um, on the female header, while on the other side, you heat up the solder that you put on one of the pins and that'll allow you to 
to basically mount the, the uh, female header fleshly with the board. I'm going to turn my temperature up a little bit. It's better for the headers. Okay, so the solder melted. So now, see how I was pushing down? Now this header is basically flush with the PCB. Okay. See, there's no more gap in the middle. Now the second thing you want to check is that it's perpendicular. So I don't know if you can tell like that, but you see how the header is basically pointing straight up off the board? So that's that's going to be what you're looking for so that all of the male headers will align nicely when you try to attach them. Okay. Um, you can also use the, the white silk screen on the PCB to see if it's aligned properly. So I'm going to do the same exact same thing for the other three headers and I'll fast forward through that as I go. Um, one thing you do want to do beforehand uh, is go ahead and, and solder down the opposite pin on the header that you corrected. So after it's flush and perpendicular like the way you want it, you go ahead and solder down um, both pins so that it doesn't move around on you. Okay. So I'll do that and then I'll fast forward through this. Um, and, then I'll, and then at the end, once I have all four, the two pins on each side of them tacked down, um, I'll double check that everything is still aligned because the worst thing that can happen is you solder all the pins and your, your headers are crooked and then you get in trouble and have to desolder everything. Okay, so now what I have so far is uh, for all the four female headers, I have two pins, one on each side of the header, tacked down so that they at least stay still. So now I'm going to go back over and, and check to see if they're all aligned and, and flush with the board. So right off the bat I can see this header here is still not fully flush with the board. There's a gap on one of the sides. So what I'm going to do is like we did for the first one, I'm going to hold, press down on the header with my finger. I hold the PCB and then I'm going to melt the solder on that pin so that I can push it down through like that. Okay. And then while you're pushing it down, you want to make sure that it's that it's flush so that when you turn around to look at it, it's it's aligned nicely with the other header. So, um, if you can notice here, the these headers aren't necessarily perfectly aligned like in the middle here. If I show you a view up top, you might be able to see better. Uh, so, this header right here Looks like this pin could kind of go to the right a little bit. So I'm going to push down into the right a little bit while I melt this solder on this bottom pin um, like that until I can get it hot enough to slide it over like that. Okay. All right, I'm giving it a look. So now it looks nice and flush with the board, so now this other header looks like it could be adjusted a little bit, so I'm going to do that. And I'm just going to basically keep going around the board until everything looks nice and straight and perpendicular. And then only when that all is satisfied am I going to go and solder the rest of the pins on the headers. Okay, so just going over and look at them, this is good enough. So you can see like there's a, a little tiny bit off here, but the way we put the male headers onto the backpacks is gonna kind of make it such that those male headers are gonna basically fit your specific micro pad perfectly almost. So if it's a little tiny bit off, don't worry about it. Just make sure there's no significant, significant gaps or deviations from perpendicular. Uh, and you know it's also kind of up to you how much you personally care and like want your board to look good um, 
So now what I'm gonna do, now that I'm satisfied, I'm gonna go through and solder the rest of the pins on all the female headers. Okay, and I'll probably end up fast forwarding through that too. Just remember, just remember not to directly heat the solder with the soldering iron. Okay, so after you do each header, you might want to go and take a look at the solder joints. So, uh, just like we have in the lab document, a little description, you want them to be just like Hershey's Kisses. You don't want any big, uh, big bubbles. You just want a little bit of solder kind of going up the pins like this. So like these two pins, um, I could probably add a little more solder to because I don't have that, that curved slope like I have on these pins. So I'll touch those up really quick and then keep going. Okay, so now that all those female headers are soldered, again, go back over and check out all the joints really quick and make sure none of them are obviously over or under soldered. And then if they're all still straight and lined up, you should be good to go. This is all you need to do for the micro pad itself uh, because everything else is going to either plug into the top or below it. Alright, so the next thing we're going to assemble is the switch and LED backpack. So, as we said, this is going to have a 8-pin dip switch, right, like here, and then it's going to have one of the um, headers we cut, the 9-pin one, that's going to go into the top like this, so that the, the, the black insulation and the long pins are facing upwards, so that you can probe the pins with your dad board. And then we're going to use four of the 8-pin headers that we cut. Those are going to go into each side facing downwards, like this. Because these are what's going to plug into the female headers on the micro pad that we soldered in the previous step. So the first thing we're going to do is solder the switches and the headers, uh, because it'll be easier with, to solder those without the other four headers already being attached. So I will start with the switches. So. If you notice, um, on the switches, there's a, there's a little on, see if we can focus on that, there's a on indicator at the top left here, and you're going to want that to be facing up towards the tactile switches. So I'm going to put it on, make sure all the, all the pins go in nicely, you don't want to bend any. And then once you have the switch on, then just go ahead and flip it upside down. And similar to the female headers we did earlier, uh, you're going to want to do only one of each of the two corner pins. So we'll do these two corner pins, and then we'll turn it upside down, make sure it's flush with the board, and then solder the rest. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Okay. So I've got those two, those two pins on each corner soldered, and now I'm going to make sure everything is lined up on the top and that it's flush with the, with the PCB. Um, you, you're going to have a little bit of gap down there, and that's, that's fine. Um, so it's a, it's, a little, it's a little crooked on this side, so I'm going to straighten that out and then go ahead and solder the rest of them. Okay, um, similar to the headers, just go ahead and double check each of your joints and make sure they're all nice little Hershey's Kisses, no big bubbles or anything like that. You don't want any of the gold plating to still be exposed. And once you're good, the next thing we're going to do is this 9-pin header here. And remember, uh, it's going to go facing upwards because you're going to need access to it uh, for probing purposes, and then you're going to solder on the bottom, same side as you soldered the switches. 
So again, just like all the headers, and I'm going to repeat myself every time, you only want to do the two edge, the edge pins first, make sure it's straight, um, and then proceed. And with this, with this particular header, it's not as crucial that it's straight because nothing's going to uh, plug directly into it besides the individual wires on your dad board. So if it's a little crooked on the top, that's fine. Um, just, you know, looks better aesthetically if it's straight, but it's up to you. Okay, so I got the two, two, two end pins. Uh, lights just went dim, we'll get those fixed. Um, the, the header, just make sure it's flush and relatively perpendicular to the board, and then go ahead and solder, solder the rest of them. Okay, so we've got all those soldered, um, and after you've done the switches and that nine pin header, now is when we can move on to the next next uh, backpack. We're gonna do all of these uh, male headers that plug into the micro pad at the end, because for each backpack, we're gonna do it in a particular way that makes everything line up, so we'll just do them all at the same time. All right, so after the switch and LED backpack, I'm going to move to the analog backpack. So this one should be fairly straightforward because all you need to solder is the CDS cell, which looks like this, uh, up in this these two pins here, as well as one of the two pin headers, um, which is going to go here, uh, J3. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do the CDS cell first. So you're going to want to put the two pins in so that the the top of the CDS cell is facing above the board like that and then just go ahead and flip it over and solder those two pins on just try to get it uh, you know as close to the PCB as possible it doesn't have to be touching okay so after you solder that on what you're gonna want to do is take some wire cutters and cut these basically as close to the top of the solder as you can. We have we have flush cut wire cutters in the lab. I don't have any of them right now, so I'm just gonna use this for the sake of this video. Okay, um, you're gonna want them to cut them, again, lower than this if you have flush cut wire cutters, but as long as the, the two pins don't touch, it should be okay. So next thing, I'm gonna do one of these two pin headers. Uh, it's gonna go on J3, and you're gonna want the long side facing upwards so that you can use your dad board to basically input signals into this because it is the analog backpack which you'll get into in some of the later labs. Um, so now this uh, this two pin header can be a little trickier since you can't just you know rest it upside down because it probably won't stay still. So uh, something I usually do may not be the you know best practice but I get a little bit of solder on the tip of the iron and I know this is what we tell you exactly not to do, um, but just, just enough solder to tack down one of the pins so that the header stays still. Um, and then when that's the case, then you can solder it like normal so that it ends up relatively straight with the board. So you get a little bit of solder on the tip and then make sure your finger's not actually on the metal of the one you're gonna heat up. Uh, and then just get enough on there so that it adheres to the pad so that, um, like that. Um, heat it up a little bit more. Okay. So now that's not gonna, not gonna fall out because I have just a little bit of solder there. Another thing you can do is kind of rest it on top of something that's a similar height. Um, I think some of the breadboards are a good example. But for now I'll just do this. And again, you know, just solder, solder enough to keep it on there, and then take a look at it from the top and make sure that it's nice and perpendicular to the board. And again, double check your, your uh, solder joints. See this one, this is um, a little bubbly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fully heat up the pin to let some of the solder flow a little more down the pin until um, it looks better like that. All right. So 
that's everything you need to solder for the analog backpack. Okay, so um, before we solder on the speaker, we're gonna go ahead and finish up the um, robotics backpack. So I'll set that aside. And then for the robotics backpack, there's two things we need to solder. That's the six pin screw terminal, which is how you connect wires um, that you're using to drive your motor. And then there's this two pin uh, jumper called JMP1 here. And that's basically gonna be used to connect or disconnect power to the motor driver. And like we mentioned before, this, this five volt uh, DC adapter is what you're gonna use to be able to power this thing. Okay, so the screw pin, the six pin screw terminal, uh, the only really trick to this is you're gonna want the, the actual terminals to face the outside of the board so that you can easily connect wires to it, okay? As opposed to this side. So just like all the other headers, just kind of put it upside down and you're just gonna wanna solder um, the two pins on the edge and just so you can make sure that it's flush. And these pins on this screw terminal are a little thicker to allow for more current to go to the motor. So you might have to leave your iron on them a little longer for them to get hot enough to melt the solder. So just be patient with them. And, you're, and because they are bigger um, through holes and pins, you're gonna wanna put a little bit more solder than for the other headers. Um, let's see, so that looks basically flush with the board. This side, I'm going to need to push down a little bit. So I'll go ahead and do the same thing as I, I did for this female headers and melt the solder on the bottom while applying a little bit of pressure from the top. And there we go. So now it's nice and flush with the board, perpendicular. So now I'm going to go ahead and solder the rest of the pins. Okay, double check. This joint has a little bit too much solder, but that one should be okay. Um, you can you can apply some heat to it and see if you can get some of it off. But if not, it should be fine. Uh, but they all have plenty. They all have enough solder um, that it should be good to go. So now we'll move on to the JMP1 header. So that's going to be the second two-pin header that you uh, cut at the beginning. So just put that in there. And then just like all the other headers, um, make sure you have something to either prop it up on so that it doesn't fall out of the bottom or use the, you know, the method I showed you where you just put a little bit of um, solder on one of the pins. And I think I've mentioned that this, is, this header is gonna be used to connect or disconnect uh, the power from the DC adapter to the motor driver. Should be good to go. Alright, so after you soldered those two things, um, you're going to continue and you're going to need to add an eight, one of your 8-pin headers to this board in J6 facing upwards because this is going to be used to probe the serial communication signals that you use to communicate um, between your processor and the IMU that's on this backpack. So same as all the other headers, just do one pin on each side and then double check that it's straight before you proceed. All right, so I did two pins. Um, it looks nice and flush with the board. It looks, um, pretty perpendicular, so I'm going to go ahead and continue and do the other six pins. Alright, each of the joints looks like it's got a nice amount of solder, so we're good to move on. Uh, so that's the last of the backpacks we need to worry about for now. Um, and then after that, we're going to move on to installing the speaker that we skipped past on the analog backpack, as well as soldering the headers um, onto the memory base. Okay. All right. So after we've got all the most of the components on the backpack soldered, we're going to finally go back and do the 
um, speaker from the, on the analog backpack that we skipped past earlier. Uh, so basically, the there's a few main components to this. Of course, is the speaker with uh, two wires that are going to connect to the backpack, and then there's four screws as well as four nuts that are going to be used to mount the speaker to the backpack so that it doesn't vibrate or is just dangling somewhere. And then finally you have this um, laser cut mount that is going to go right be between the speaker and the backpack itself. So put this stuff down and make sure you use the right screws. Um, these screws for the speaker are smaller than the other screws you got in the kit. Uh, that are they're for just when you just have the micro pad and the memory base together They're not the same the threads aren't the same so they these screws won't work with the nuts from the um, The speaker mount stuff so just double check using the right screws and Then we'll go ahead and start start getting ready to solder so go ahead and sometimes um, the This is just, these are just acrylic pieces. So sometimes there's acrylic still in these two holes here so just make sure those are unobstructed if you have some acrylic that didn't get fully cut out you can use one of the screws that are made for this and then just kind of poke this the screw through the hole to get the to get the path cleared okay all right so you might notice that the speaker comes with rather long set of wires um, so the speaker is the speaker is going to go here and the wires are going to need to connect to J4 right here So that's maybe like a an inch or two of wire you actually need so this is optional but um, you may want to cut the wire to a length that you find you know aesthetically pleasing I guess because if we were to just connect the the wire to here the way it is now we would have all this extra wire to have to deal with. So I'm just gonna kind of roughly estimate how long I think the wire will need to be to, to go to this header at a reasonable length and then use some wire cutters to, to just shorten that down to size. All right, and then we have some wire strippers in lab. Um, that you'll need to use to strip this wire so that you can actually solder it to the to the through holes on the PCB so you maybe want like a, a little bit less than a centimeter like half centimeter or so on each of these just enough so you have some actually something to to solder so you, you want that exposed uh, let me get this to focus a little tiny wire There you go. Okay, so notice how there's a, a little bit of wire here that's now exposed. It's about how much you're going to want. You're going to want it to be able to go through the hole and a little bit more on the other side. So I'm going to do the same thing, more or less, for the red wire. Okay, strip that off. Now, um, what I would do first is actually mount the speaker before you solder the wire, just so you don't have to, you know, try to hold it, hold it onto the PCB while you're doing it. So You'll notice this laser cut mount has a, a section that's that's cut out on this side. So that's the side that the wires on the speaker are going to go on. Alright. So just line the speaker up with the holes on the bracket. And then the screws are going to go through the top, from the top of the speaker down to the bottom of the laser cut mount like that. And then the, this side of the screw is going to go through the board, and then the nut is going to go on the other side of the PCB, which will show. So I'll go ahead and put all four of the screws in, and then put it on the PCB afterwards. You can do this in any order you want if you can think of a, a better way, you know, it's all, it's all going to achieve the same goal. Okay, uh, my lights went off again, oh well. Um, so now I'm going to put this into the PCB and I'm going to put it such that the wires are going to be closest to these holes as opposed to on this side. Okay. So now I've got all the screws in. So now one at a time I'm going to add these um, nuts to the bottom of the screws. 
and this is a we're doing this first because it's a lot easier to to get these nuts on the bolts without the headers being installed already and you can use um, a pair of pliers or or something to tighten the nuts a little bit you don't want them to be uh, over tightened so that you can't take them off eventually but um, common problem is that after you use the speaker a lot or as this fumbles around in your toolbox or whatever the nuts can kind of come unscrewed and then you just lose them and then if you only have say two or three of these bolts on or if they're loose then the speaker won't sound right because it's not being held firmly to the board so I'm just gonna go ahead and install all four of these I uh, dropped one Okay, found it. Just try to work over the table, I guess, so that if you drop it, it doesn't fall on the floor like that. Um, and as you guys are going through your kits, you might have already found this or not, but the speaker, it's, it, has a, it has a magnet, so it's very common for these bolts to get stuck to the speaker or to the back of it, and then you might you know, not know where it is. So just if you can't find one of the nuts or bolts, just kind of look for the, look around the speaker and see if it got stuck to it. Okay. So last one. All right. <clears throat> now I'm going to go through and tighten all these ones that I haven't tightened yet. Just make sure they're all kind of firm. All right, good enough for now. Um, so now um, I have these speaker wires. So what I'm gonna do is make sure all the little tiny wires within each wire aren't sticking out or it'll be harder to get it through the through holes. And these, these are not polarized, so it doesn't matter which of the holes on J4 you put them through, it'll still work the same. So. I'm just gonna put the red in, followed by the black. All right, so now I've got I've got both wires sticking through the bottom side of the board. So now I can solder these as if they were, you know, normal headers or other through hole components. All right should be good to go. Um, now what you can do is use some wire cutters to snip off any extra you have. The only thing I would worry about with this is if you have strands of this wire, if they're loose, they could potentially short each other. So just make sure everything you, everything you have here is solid and not gonna move around, so just cut off any excess. Okay, so after we have the speaker mounted, that's, we have everything attached to the backpacks that we need and now we have to actually connect the the four male headers on each backpack so that we can plug it in to the micro pad all right so um, the trick with doing this is um, or at least the easiest way to do this is to as opposed to soldering all of the headers to these backpacks one at a time and having to worry about straightening them up you already have these female headers that are more or less perfectly aligned so what we're gonna do is put the male headers into these female headers before we solder and that, what that's gonna do is that's gonna make sure that when we put the backpack on top and solder it we're gonna solder it in place so that it's aligned perfectly for your micro pad all right so now you're gonna put the backpack on top of these short the short ends of these male headers um, and the little cutout at the top of the backpack, that's the side that is going to go over the reset button on the micro pad. Okay, and that's very important. If you if you do it backwards, none of the backpacks will work, and you'll be in trouble. All right. So what I'm doing is just trying to align um, all of the headers on the backpacks to the male headers on the micro pad. Okay, and then go in and double check double check that all of the headers are flush and then 
because all the female headers are already aligned, you can just go through and solder all these pins without having to worry about aligning them. Okay, so now once you have all four of those male headers soldered on, um, all you need to do is uh, let it cool off, make sure everything's, everything's solid, and then you can actually just pull this backpack off, right, because it just, it plugs into the, to the micro pad perfectly since we've aligned it previously. Um, and at the beginning, uh, it might be a little hard to, to plug and unplug these backpacks, because they have such a snug fit, but throughout the semester they'll loosen up a little bit and it'll get easier. Just be careful so you don't bend any of the headers as you're unplugging them. And then we're going to repeat the same process for the other two backpacks. So I'm going to put the male header pins in the female headers, and then I'll put the backpack on top. So I'll do the same exact thing for the other two backpacks and speed through it. All right, so now all the three backpacks are fully assembled, all the headers are in, they all can you know, connect to the micro pad, uh, make sure none of your headers are bent or were bent in the process, should be good. Um, so now everything um, as far as the micro pad and the three backpacks are assembled, so now what we have left is the two 13 pin headers uh, to solder onto the memory base as well as uh, the EBIB or the EBI breakout board which we'll do last. So <clears throat> the memory base is going to have uh, 26 pins that you're going to be able to use for probing when it comes to the EBI signals. So the this small header right here that's already attached is going to be attached to the micro pad with this connection here so when they're when they're when they're assembled or connected like this you're gonna need these 13 pin headers available on the bottom so that you can probe them with your dad board so that's how we're gonna assemble them so I'm gonna take this back off um, and then I'm gonna solder these like like always one pin on each corner of each header first So I'll put one header in, rest on the table, and then apply solder to one of the pins on the end. And then notice how this is extremely crooked first try. So what we're gonna do like always, heat the pin on the bottom, and then with your other finger, straighten it out on the top. All right, bam. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do the pin on the other end, and then I'll do the same exact thing for the other 13-pin header. All right. And every time you do one of the edge pins, just double-check that it's still relatively perpendicular to the board. Okay. Now the next one, same process. All right. Rest on the table. Then I'm going to do the two edge pins just like I did the other one. Okay, turn it over. Looks pretty perpendicular. So now I'm going to do um, the rest of the other pins in the middle on both of these headers. Okay. Um, so now that the memory base is done, that's all you have to solder to it. Next thing we'll have to solder is going to be the EBI breakout board. So this semester this video is being filmed, um, the EBI breakout board and the memory base um, are both going to be used in tandem 
So the EBI breakout board is gonna basically be sandwiched between the memory base and the micro pad, like this. Um, in future semesters, the goal is for both of these boards to be combined into one. So all the functionality of the memory base will be added to the EBI breakout board. Uh, so they will, there will only be two boards then, the combined board and the micro pad. So uh, the components that come with the EBI breakout board are the board itself and then uh, four longer screws because it, like we said, like I just mentioned this semester, um, three, three of these boards are going to be stacked to each other. So you'll need longer screws to be sandwiched in between um, to screw into the standoffs on the bottom. Um, it also contains four more spacers that are identical to the ones that were in the original micropad kit just because there's an extra board that they'll need to go between. Uh, and then the last thing that comes with the EBI breakout board are right angle headers. Uh, these are what are going to be connected and all of these pins here. This semester there's uh, multiple right angle headers that you're going to have to use and then cut off the excess. In future semesters, there might be a single, a single right angle header that covers all of them. So that should be the only main difference. Um, so this, the purpose of these right angle headers um, is so that you can, you can plug the micro pad assembly into a breadboard vertically like this and then have access to all the EBI signals. Uh, so uh, because of that, you're going you're gonna to need to make sure that these two headers and you, you won't have to worry about this when they're all one piece, um, but you want them to basically be as, as lined up as possible. So if they're skewed like this, you can see in the middle, they might not fit into a single breadboard row, which is the goal, okay? So just be really careful when you're doing these. And like always, solder the two pins on the edges of each of the headers and make sure they're straight and aligned and then solder the rest, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and snap the excess off here. So because they're already in the board, I can just snap it like that and it already gets it to the right size. Okay. Um, this one's relatively easy. You should just be able to place it uh, sideways on the table like this to solder the pins. Um, I'm gonna go grab more solder. If you guys run out of solder, just ask your TA or PI or whatever it ends up being called this semester you're taking the class. All right, so I'm just gonna solder the two pins on each edge of each of the headers. This is probably the most important, if not the second most important um, ones to get straight because there's just so many pins that have to all go into a breadboard at the right angle. All right, so I've got the pins on the corner soldered. So I'm gonna take a look at this. Um, and if you can see, this here is where the gap in the header is. Um, and these, both of these look pretty nicely aligned. It's nice and perpendicular to the board. So it should fit into a breadboard nicely. And after that, you can go ahead and solder the rest of them. <clears throat> All right. So after you have the headers on the, on the EBI breakout board soldered, that's should be the last thing you have to solder. So the last step is gonna be the actual assembly of all the boards. So this part is gonna vary from semester to semester depending on if you have both the memory base and the EBIB or if you have the combined version. So um, if you have the combined version, it's gonna be very simple. You're just gonna have to connect the baseboard to the micro pad um, with this small mezzanine connector here um, and then put the screws and standoffs on and you're good to go. 
Whereas this semester and maybe a couple semesters after, um, we're gonna put the EBIB between the memory base and the micropad itself. So um, you're not, if that's the case, you're not gonna use the shorter screws. You're gonna need to use the longer screws that came with the EBI breakout kit uh, because that's gonna have to go through all three boards and then through the standoffs. Okay. So first thing I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go from top to bottom. So I'm gonna connect the micro pad to the EBIB, again with the same small uh, mezzanine connector. Um, and these pins are very small, so just kind of be careful not to bend any of them as much as possible, because it'll make it much more difficult to connect in the long run. Um, okay, uh, And then the four spacers that came in the EBIB kit are gonna go between between the EBI board and the micro pad. So one thing I would recommend is just to go um, one corner at a time. So take one of the spacers and put it between the holes on one one of the corners of the boards, okay? So that the the hole in the spacer lines up with the hole in the boards. Put a screw through it. And now that screw will just kind of, its job will be to hold the spacer still so you don't have to worry about it as you're doing the other three. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing with the other corner. Put the spacer down there and then put one of the long screws through it. Okay. Same thing with the other two. And then this same exact process is going to be repeated for the memory base. Except this time, you already have these long screws sticking through the bottom. So, um, what you want to do now is kind of hold it, hold the board si sideways with respect to gravity, so that the spacers don't fall off of the screws as you're trying to install the memory base. that and now make sure you have the side of the memory base with the small mezzanine connector facing upwards and then put the screws through the holes in the memory base while making sure that the the small connector on the the EBIB and the memory base here is aligned properly and then just apply a little bit of force just to, to make that connection between the boards. All right, so now everything is flush and connected on all three of the boards. So the only thing we need to add now is these four standoffs and these are gonna go on the bottom and basically uh, hold the board up from touching the table. And these just, screw directly on to the, the long screws that are going through all three of the boards. Like that. Okay. And you don't have to tighten these as, as you know as tight as you can uh, because you might need to take this apart for some things. And you don't want to you don't want to snap the the weaker corners on the boards if you use a screwdriver or something. So I would recommend just putting your finger on the top of the screw and then tightening the standoff with your other hand. Um, because if you tighten it with a screwdriver, you might snap something. All right. <clears throat> All right, so now you have the micro pad um, kit fully assembled. Everything's good to go. Um, the only thing you need to do now is probably connect the, the USB cable to your computer when you're doing the first lab to make sure everything works, and then you should be good to go. Um, another thing to remember is that uh, the backpacks, they should always be installed with the groove on the top going over the reset button on the micro pad, just like that. Okay, and then just press evenly on both sides to connect the backpack. And that's basically gonna be the process for um, installing and uninstalling the backpacks. 
So what you should have left uh, in the kit is this shunt jumper here. And like we mentioned earlier, that's gonna be used for the robotics backpack right here to connect power to the motor driver. So you don't need to connect this if you're not using the motors, um, but you can if you want to, if you don't wanna lose it. Um, and then, like we said, the motors we're not currently using in the class, but go ahead and hold on to the wires and the motor itself in case you wanna play with it later or in future semesters if we end up using it. The very last thing we should mention is, um, we, we've talked about before how this, this is the only DC adapter you should use for this class. Um, to, to basically force you to remember that, we're gonna provide you with a, an out of the box power supply sticker that you should install on this DC adapter so that you don't confuse it from power supplies you get from any of your devices at home or other classes in this department. So go ahead and make sure you install the sticker um, before you take it home and lose it or something like that. All right, there we go. So I think that should be it. So we hope that this helped you get more familiar with the 3744 lab kit, as well as all the components in the lab kit, because this lab kit will be used throughout the remainder of the labs and the remainder of the semester. Um, and overall, the current students of 3744, as well as future semesters, I hope that this goes well. Oh, and if you're watching this in 2037 or 3744, nice. <laughs> yeah, so we hope you had a good time. All right, see ya.